we want to work, but there's no no work. I am just um, give, doing what I can for now. Renters and landlords in our state are waiting anxiously as the state and CDC bans on evictions during the pandemic end on December 31st. Our delinquencies have, have roughly doubled. It's estimated more than 100,000 renters in the Seattle area are months behind in their payments. And the full amount comes due next month unless the governor extends the deadline. But for the eviction moratorium, these renters would be experiencing homelessness. Is help on the way? Our panel of experts weighs in. No housing provider wants to evict any resident ever. What we ultimately need is rent relief. Tracking the latest on rent relief and the eviction moratorium, next on City Inside Out. Welcome to this edition of City Inside Out. I'm your host, Brian Callanan. An eviction moratorium has been in place for our state since the start of the COVID pandemic in early March. But that, along with a federal ban on evictions from the CDC, is set to expire at the end of the year, possibly setting off what some tenant advocates say would be an eviction tsunami. Landlords say they want to avoid that, but they're wondering how to pay their bills with some tenants thousands of dollars behind on rent. Cities like Seattle have their own eviction bans in place, extending past the end of the pandemic. But for frustrated renters and property owners, that's just a Band-Aid on a major nationwide problem that's growing day by day. So I'm announcing a statewide moratorium on evictions. Governor Jay Inslee banned residential evictions statewide in March in an effort to help renters who were losing their jobs from losing so much more. Given the status of this epidemic, we just can't have a big spike in homelessness together with this epidemic raging. As COVID-19 cases in our state, like others, spiked over the course of the year, oh, sure. Inslee Good extended news. the moratorium, an action Violetta Cialaire calls a lifesaver. Many people suffer. It was everybody. Cialaire, a school bus driver, like hundreds of thousands of others, was out of work when classrooms closed down this spring. A hundred drivers are out of job right now. Yet the state eviction ban, as well as a federal eviction moratorium from the CDC, is set to expire on December 31st. Cialaire is a member of the Washington Community Action Network and serves on the governor's eviction moratorium work group. Many renters like her believe, with coronavirus caseloads climbing every day, an abrupt end to the moratorium could be disastrous. And we don't know how long it's going to be, so the situation is getting worse. If they're fixing everything, it should go slowly going back to normal, but not just suddenly when you, like, you're still in the middle of the crisis. Extending the eviction ban encourages non-payment of rent. That's Preston Walls, owner of Walls Property Management, which runs dozens of apartment buildings in the Seattle area. He says a rising number of his renters, especially in older so-called Class C buildings, are delinquent or behind on rent. Census figures show more than a half million people in our state are now using credit cards or short-term loans to cover basic spending. Over the course of, of COVID, our, our delinquencies have, have roughly doubled. Landlords and tenants say no one wants to go through a costly and time-consuming eviction process. But Walls says he now has 15 renters behind more than a month on rent payments. Two of them are behind more than six months. Two people who've cost him thousands of dollars. It's those outliers that are really, really impactful. It gets to a point where, where a tenant can say, hey, there's no consequences to me not paying, so I'm not, I'm not going to. There are those that don't pay just because, and I'm not one of those. Shakura Wilford still has her office manager job and is paying part of her rent each month. But she's using the moratorium to conserve some cash for now. And it's kind of a cushion to help you, you know, continue with everything else. She's a single mom and says utility bills and food costs are all on the rise for her family as they spend more time at home. Wilford is behind about $6,000 on rent and is hoping state or federal leaders can craft a program that might help her and local landlords once the moratorium ends. I think we all need a forgiveness um, and start from scratch. 
so we can continue to build instead of trying to um, go backwards and clean up what our mess. Many landlords balk at the idea of rent forgiveness, and they're calling for stronger restrictions if the city, state, or federal eviction bans continue, possibly requiring tenants to prove direct financial hardship from COVID-19 and ensuring landlords get at least a percentage of the back rent due. If there's a law in place, there should also be resources available to landlords impacted by this. As the year-end deadline approaches, all eyes are on the governor to figure out how to gracefully end an eviction moratorium that'll take a lot more than next month's rent to pay for. We will all get through this together. I hope people can think about that. And joining us to discuss this topic, we have with us Michelle Thomas. She is the Director for Policy and Advocacy at the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance. We also have with us Roger Valdez. He is Director of Seattle for Growth, who advocates for landlords in our region, and also Edmund Witter. He is the Senior Managing Attorney with the Housing Justice Project for the King County Bar Association. Michelle, I want to start with you here and talk about where we are right now, basically. The State Department of Commerce says we have more than a billion dollars owed in back rent right now in our state. How big of a problem is that? What are we dealing with in Seattle and King County? What impact is the ban on evictions having in this situation? Well, first of all, the ban on evictions is absolutely critical in preventing a massive increase in homelessness. Before the COVID crisis, we had more people experiencing homelessness than we have homes and that we have resources uh, to provide them a home. Uh, once that co Since COVID has hit, the need has increased dramatically. The Census Bureau is doing um, pulse survey data. They've been doing it since April. The latest data shows that between 150,000 and 170,000 renters in Washington state are currently behind on the rent. But for the eviction moratorium, these renters would be experiencing homelessness. There's also two really important um, medical uh, uh, journals that came out in the last month that showed that uh, in other states that do not have eviction moratoriums, that there has been uh, a tangible increase in the spread of COVID and in uh, mortality. They've made a direct link between homelessness and evictions and the increase in COVID. Um, I think it's really important to understand as well that it's our communities of color in Washington state that are hardest hit. Uh, that's for lots of reasons, historic racism, um, historic lack of opportunity to own a home um, means that more people of color are renters. And because the COVID pandemic has also hit communities of color hardest and also the unemployment and COVID economy has also hit communities of color hardest. Okay. What this means is that we're seeing significant disproportionality and impact. But for the eviction moratorium, we would see a significant increase in homelessness and in the spread of COVID amongst communities of color. Um, the last thing I'll say, um, mm -hmm. just to open, is that the people uh, throughout Washington state who are unable to pay their rent are in every community, but it is deeply concentrated in the high rent Puget Sound area. And that's obviously for lots of reasons. One, we have more population here, we have more renters, but it's also because rents are so high. Renters in uh, throughout Washington state, but particularly in the Puget Sound region have been completely gouged, which means that one economic emergency, one increased payment, one loss of hours, and they do not have savings to pay their landlord. They don't have savings to meet their basic needs. Okay. So this is deeply correlated to, to the broader um, problems that Washington state faced before COVID. Okay, I wanna make sure that we get into a lot of those details, but I need to move on right here. Uh, Roger, I'll, I'll go to you next here. You've heard the stats on back rent. Also unemployment numbers in our state are right now about 50% higher than they were before the pandemic. Clearly, a lot of people are going through financial hardship. You heard what Michelle was talking about there. A lot of renters would say an eviction ban has been a lifesaver here, but I think you have a different viewpoint on that. I'd like you to break it down, please. Well, since the very beginning, we've been a p persistent and consistent voice advocating for income assistance <clears throat> and rent assistance for people who have lost their jobs or their income from this, uh, from government uh, intervention for COVID-19, preventing the spread of it. So e eviction bans don't uh, put money in anybody's account. They don't pay the rent. Um, and so what we're doing is we're kicking the can down the road and we're making the problem uh, longer term worse than it needs to be. When, when the governor uh, or the mayor shuts down the economy, 
the, what the first thing they should have done is they should have said, how are we going to replace the income from hardworking people in the service sector who are not going to be able to pay for groceries or food or <clears throat> for rent or for other needed expenses? There's not there's so many of them that people face. Um, and when their income is shut off, they can't pay any of those things. Right. Right. So income assistance is what is essential. Uh, eviction bans are great for um, eviction defense attorneys to win cases in court, but they don't pay the rent. So okay. what we need is we need rental assistance. Um, the the failure of government, um, the, the employment service, the employment uh, security department's failure to distribute uh, to distribute unemployment uh, compensation has been mm-hmm. scandalous. The 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 uh, Aud- state auditor is now looking into that. And so what we have is a government local at the state level, the governor, who's sort of shutting the economy off like a kid playing with a light switch. Mm. And they're not doing anything to make up for the, the, the lost rent. The good okay. news, Brian, is that people are paying the rent. Yeah, The, the numbers that Michelle mentioned are completely bogus, and I mm. don't know where they come from. But the survey that we did across six, the six most populous counties in the Puget Sound showed about $25 million of an unpaid rent through all the sector, A, B, and C class buildings, um, mm-hmm. concentrating mainly on, obviously, people that are poor in B and C class buildings. Yeah. And that was about $25 million. And okay. if that quadrupled, we'd have $100 million in back mm-hmm. rent. Let's pay that. Let's pay it now. Okay. I think everybody on this uh, call would agree, let's just pay the $100 million of the people that need it and okay. let's develop an insurance program so that the next time the economy gets shut off okay that there's a way for people to apply for rent assistance that's fast okay okay i want to make sure that i hear from edmund on this one because edmund there's a lot of different numbers we're talking about here on the surface the general trend is that evictions are down but clearly there's a lot more to it i want to your take on this what are you seeing in terms of eviction numbers in king county an eviction moratorium helping us or hurting us what do you think the moratorium is really necessary to be able to buy time. I mean, I think as both Michelle and Roger alluded to, what we ultimately need is rent relief. There's a lot of people who are behind and the numbers are all over the place. I've seen some really large numbers. I've seen smaller numbers. I've seen surveys from a recent one out of Issaquah. That was a survey of the multifamily buildings there. Some buildings reported 2% delinquency. Others reported 60% delinquency. And the data is really just sort of confounding. Um, but we do know, I think we all agree, that there's a big problem with rent right now. And there are a lot of people who are facing eviction and potentially a lot more than we normally would see. We've needed the time to be able to get the rent assistance out there. I and mean, one of the big ironies right now is in within King County, we have about $50 million that's mm-hmm. potentially available. But it's we have a December 30th deadline yeah. where if that money's not spent, it's going to get recaptured by the federal government and it won't be there for landlords or tenants. Right. And Irony, like ironic, nobody really thinks 50 million is enough, but it's weird that we almost run it, might not use it or not have the available funds. And that's just like a sort of like, it's really kind of a twist of fate of 2020. The federal government really does need to intervene here. I I think everyone is just waiting for them. The governor's been waiting for that. The legislature's been waiting for that. The courts Mm -hmm. have been waiting for, I think everyone's waiting for that. Where is the money going to come from? When is it going to come? And we cannot risk, I think, having a ton of evictions happening, the public health crisis that might that might exacerbate. Yeah. And ultimately, people are going to be out of money and out of homes. And that's going to be a really big problem for everyone involved in this yeah. community. Yeah, and I know the U.S. Congress is working on that right now. So we're going to stay on top of that part of it. Michelle, I want to get back to you and kind of get into some of the nitty gritty here, because uh, some landlords would tell you a moratorium on evictions encourages people not to pay rent. What are you advising people to do who have the money to pay for rent and they might be concerned about this. They, they don't want to pay that right now because they're concerned about dollars and cents. Should renters have to prove an economic need to qualify for an eviction moratorium? What do you think about this? So I don't think that there's renters out there who can't afford to pay the rent who are just choosing not to. It is true that some people may still have income coming in, but they have increased expenses and they're making hard choices between paying full rent are also paying their medical bills, are also paying for their child care, are also paying for the increased food costs that they have because their children are at home all day for school. There's increased internet bills, there's increased utilities bills. There, there's a lot of stress on communities right now. So this idea that there's a bunch of tenants out there who are just choosing to go party with the funds and not pay it is absolutely nonsensical. There, um, you know, to the numbers that are from the federal government, the 
the Census Bureau, the Pulse data, you know, it shows us that there's a lot of people hurting in Washington state. Not only mm-hmm. is there between 150,000 and 170,000 individual renters yeah. in the last month who report that they're behind in rent, there's also hundreds of thousands of people who are currently paying their rent who report that they're only able to meet their basic needs by using credit cards or savings. Mm -hmm. That speaks to um, the nature of how deep this crisis is. And it also speaks to the fact that this is going to be a long term crisis for low income renter households. So to uh, Edward's Edward's point about the federal government, Mm -hmm. absolutely, the federal government needs to step in with rental assistance to address the significant arrears that landlords across Washington state are facing. However, we need a prolonged approach. We need the state to intervene to create a longer term rental assistance program because all economists are saying that this is what's called a K-shaped recovery, meaning that folks at the lower incomes who are the renters who we are most worried about are going to have the slowest recovery. It's gonna take longer for them to get back to jobs. And they were hurting before the pandemic. They've depleted their savings. They've depleted every lifeline they have And but for the moratorium and then hopefully soon, but for the state stepping in and creating Mm -hmm. a rental assistance program, these folks are going to be struggling for a long time. And we will have a homelessness crisis and an eviction crisis on our hands for many years to come. So we really see it as a state and federal response. There's got to be a partnership. It does need to be put together there and coordinated. That's for sure. Uh, Roger, I do want to make sure I touch on this whole idea about economic need and the eviction moratorium. Uh, You heard Michelle say there aren't that many cases of this happening where people do have money and are not paying their rent. Your thoughts about that? Uh, Well, first of all, there's a lot of things that Michelle said that I don't agree with. But one thing that I would like to talk with her offline further that we do agree about is a long-term rental assistance program that Mm -hmm. needs to be developed now. It should have been developed six months ago. And it should look like unemployment insurance and it should be fast and it should be um, the kind of thing that you can go online and simply say, I lost my job because of COVID-19. Here's an email from my employer that I'm laid off. Mm -hmm. And here's my bank routing number. Here's my account number. And I want that money in that person's account three in three weeks or less. Mm -hmm. That's what Michelle and Edmund and I all should agree agree on and i want to see the governor do it i don't want Mm. the commerce department messing around with it i don't want nonprofits in the way i don't want a big bureaucratic system where people have to prove a bunch of stuff an email from an employer your bank routing and your 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 account number and i want the money there asap yeah and so you make it it sound very simple i know but yeah that's what that's absolutely what we need with the federal dollars as far as people not paying uh, Michelle's wrong. It's not about people partying with the money. It's it's people who are, as she pointed out, they're terrified of the future. When again, the governor keeps switching the economy on and off, and and says now you're unemployed again, and now you're employed again, and now you're unemployed again. Yeah. And someone looks at that rent bill and they say, you know what? I've got an eviction ban. I'm not going to pay it because I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job at the end of December or in February. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hang on to that money. So it's a rational reaction. If we had um, good rental relief programs, Mm -hmm. there there wouldn't be an issue, right? And so while it's not a lot of people, it is a significant and growing problem. And it's going to cause an issue where you've got back rent that are of people who are below 50% of area median income or 100% or 80%. Who have eight, nine, ten thousand dollars in back rent? Right. That is going to push them into poverty. So, so I, this I, is a real serious problem that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And, and I know it's happening nationwide too, Edmund. I want to bring it back in here. You brought up that idea of the difficulty in getting dollars out to people. What's going on here? I know that the Housing Justice Project has really tried to be this bridge, but why has it been so difficult to distribute money? <laughs> Um, well, we're, I mean, we're issuing about two and a half million dollars ourselves and we have a pretty flexible program, but it's been slow to get the money trickling down. That's been the biggest problem. The money, most of this came out, it was initially, um, was created basically back, back in March by the federal government through the CARES Act. And it's been yeah. slow to trickle down through all the different channels. Um, and then we have this deadline that Congress created of December 30th, which is just too soon. And there's a real solid risk that this money is not only going to go back, but be a sign that we don't need more money. But realistically, we were built to fail. 
And, you know, I think there was a lot of confusion. Everybody got a bad hand here from Congress. The Treasury Department did not give clear guidance about how this money could be spent, what the appropriate guidance was. I mean, as Roger said, there's a lot of bureaucracy here that really killed a lot of this, and there did need to be more flexibility. But it's just been slow going to get it down there all the way to the point where it's getting to the tenant and the landlord. So ultimately, we can clear that balance. It's fortunately now moving, I think, pretty well. I think King County made some pretty good moves. They made a fund that was both a way for a landlord to apply directly for it, and then also for some tenants who maybe who landlord was not going to participate, where the tenant could also participate as well. Yeah. So there was like this sort of big, like I think, a way of different approaches to try to make sure the money got to the people who needed it. Got it. Got it. I want to make sure that we jump ahead here with the possibility that our state does extend the eviction moratorium past the end of the year. Michelle, I imagine some new conditions might be in place at that point. Maybe tenants do have to prove their economic need. Maybe landlords have to agree they only get a percentage of their back rent back, something along those lines. What do you think is going to be negotiated here to make this eviction ban more amenable to landlords and tenants? Where's the middle ground? I mean, honestly, it's um, the legislature meets the second Monday of January. So um, we're asking the governor to extend the eviction moratorium to give the legislature time to pass the policy solutions that we need to have a safe off ramp from the moratorium that still prevents a significant increase in homelessness and evictions. So um, it's more of a question, less of what the governor is going to do and more what the legislature is going to do. And um, what we're proposing to the legislature is a multi pronged approach one, to create a long term rental assistance program, a permanent rental assistance program, mm -hmm. but also fund other critical interventions to prevent homelessness, um, like the state's landlord mitigation fund, which was created several years ago that helps uh, pay landlords if there's been damages to their apartments and they've rent to a, rented to a subsidized tenant. Um, those are really important strategies that help open up the for-profit private rental market mm -hmm. to uh, lower income renters. And so that seems like a really sensible part of the solution as well. Mm -hmm. uh, lawmakers are also uh, currently considering um, the protections that we need in place to secure tenancies for the long run. Mm -hmm. For example, statewide just cause is absolutely critical. Renters in Seattle um, already have just cause and have had it for um, a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely critical because what it does, and it's um, just as this is brushing over details, but just to mm -hmm. simply quickly say, um, it requires the landlord to have a legitimate business reason to evict or to terminate the tenancy. Yeah. If we secure people's rental, uh, rental um, uh, homes with rental assistance, um, we need to also prevent landlords from uh, turning around and just giving them a 20 day notice to move because then we defeat the purpose. We do not secure their tenancy. We okay. do not sustain the household and we don't prevent okay. them from experiencing homelessness. I, I wanna make sure that I have Roger jump in here because you've heard a few of these things Michelle is saying about this transition from the moratorium. Whenever it does end, we're gonna need some sort of off ramp here. She also had some critiques of the way some landlords are acting right now. Roger, did you have a response to what you're hearing there? Well, first and foremost, you know, no, no offense Edmund, but I'd love to put you out of business. We, mm. we don't wanna evict anybody. Um, at least not any of the people that um, that are, are, are in Washington state that I've worked with. No, no eviction, no, no housing provider wants to evict any resident ever. So what we need to do is look at prevention and look at what are the issues, many of them complex and compound, uh, that end up leading to a, a breakdown that causes a, a resident to not be able to pay rent mm -hmm. or to let, violate the lease or whatever. And, and the good news is that eviction is a relatively small uh, problem. You know, it's less than 1% in the city of Seattle in the year 2016 was one of the last years it was looked at. But nevertheless, if, if one person is being evicted, that's one too many. But how do we deal with preventing that as opposed to um, writing complex laws that help the defense attorneys defend against e eviction and make right. it more expensive and more complicated. So okay. I agree that we do need, uh, you know, more cash assistance. We need more, and it has to be. So the, the, the suggestion that I've had and sent to the legislature is give the money to lenders and make it like the, the PPP program, which was not perfect, but it, it, it needs to be a program where money goes to a bank or it, the banks are, are sort of backing up this money and giving it out immediately. Yeah. And, and, and that way you're not dealing with a bunch of paperwork from the Commerce Department. Um, and the, the fund that Michelle talked about is extremely complicated to get to. Mm -hmm. And so in the long run, I think we have common interest here, which is preserving tenancies, 
preventing eviction in the first place and to the, to the, to the degree possible, getting you know fast rental assistance and yeah. cash rental assistance to people that need it quickly, efficiently. Yeah. And that, that's the most compassionate thing that we could possibly do. Thank you. We need to start wrapping up the show. This has been a great discussion. Edmund, I've kind of leaned on you to be the referee throughout here, and I'd like for you to give us some final words here. Whenever the moratorium ends, do you foresee a crisis we're going to see here? Are you feeling confident or, or what is next? Because this is something going on around the country. I can give you about 30 seconds or so, please. Yeah, well, that's the thought that keeps me up at night is what's next. I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now, but there doesn't have to be. We could have the right rent relief there. We could have the right uh, protections in place to make sure that the rent's going to get out to landlords and tenants in the appropriate way. I do think we do need to make sure that we have a moratorium into next year while that rent relief is working. And I think there's no other way around it. Otherwise, we're going to have a huge public health crisis with more people potentially facing eviction, potentially ending up on the street and overwhelming our homelessness system. And even a little bit of that is too much. And so I think we need to make sure that we are protecting ourselves. There's a lot of uncertainty next year, but it doesn't have to be that way. Got it. Michelle, 30 second version, if you can, what are we going to be seeing with this issue over the next couple of months? Well, hopefully the legislature will fast track this. They're meeting virtually, so um, they're going to have reduced capacity, but we're hoping that they recognize that this is one of the most important things that they need to do with the next legislative session. They need to implement rent relief. They need to pass the bill that we're proposing in introducing, and they also need to secure tenancies with just cause evictions statewide and other per, um, eviction defense uh, protections, such as mediation and um, access to tenant uh, legal assistance through um, uh, organizations like EDS. Okay, okay, thank you very much for that. I'll give you the last word here, Roger. I'm just trying to figure out what happens next here. Are landlords gonna tighten the screening that they do on different tenants as they come in? Are we gonna see more landlords get out of the business? What do you foresee happening in the next couple of months? Uh, those things are, are a real possibility, but I think you're seeing a, uh, a, a sort of a bolus of unpaid rent that's moving through the system right now, a big, you know, the snake swallowing the elephant. My, con my biggest concern is movements to forgive the back rent that don't take into account the fact that that's real money that hits small and medium-sized providers who have to pay rent and taxes. I think you're going to see massive impacts on uh, asset value that is going to make the, the housing production uh, business a much more complicated and riskier, which means production is going to fall. So when the economy does come back in 22 or 23 or whenever, you're going to see demand go up and there's not going to be enough supply and you're going to see prices just skyrocket again. So we need to get this relief uh, bill done in Olympia fast and efficiently. And, you know, the folks I work with are willing to work with anyone to get to, to compromise on getting that relief out in the first quarter of next year, lightning quick. Okay. Thank you all for your input here. And we will be right back. What are people on social media saying about this topic? One person writes, the hashtag eviction crisis will also be a public health crisis. Hashtag rent relief now. Another person writes, only government intervention can keep millions of Americans housed. We'd like to know what you think. Send us an email at contact at seattlechannel.org or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Coming up next time, a look at the next legislative session in Olympia. What will be on the top of the agenda for Seattle area lawmakers? We'll find out next time on City Inside Out. I hope you join us.